Goy Karano. I heard, I, today I learned that the people from Goa are called Goy Karano. Very, very sweet. Goy Karano. Goy Karano. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much for having me here. Um, it's a pleasure to be invited to this conference. Amidst all of you, and of course with Sanjeev in presence, I can only thank my stars for that. Uh, so usually I start with that, what is Itihas? And I was so sure, so I have, I have said this so many times now, I was 100% sure at some point, somebody will be like, Are humko mata, aap rehne do. I'll say it, and I'm so glad you did. So I, maybe I'll start with that, and uh, we'll move on from there. So Itihas, usually our um, Itihas, which is Ramayana and Mahabharat, they are called as mythologies. Now, by itself, the term mythology is not totally wrong. It could mean belief systems. It could mean things that have happened in the past. But currently, there is a very negative connotation that has been attached to mythology. And it basically means something that did not happen. You might think, you might believe in it, but it did not happen. That's how it has dismissed our itihas. Now, it's very interesting. On one end, on one end, they say this is all mythology, ye kuch tha nahi, ye sab bakwas hai, only stories, nice, great, imaginary stories. However, when they want to whip us as jatiwadi, as misogynist, they say, dekha, karn ke saath kya hua tha? Dekha, sita ke saath kya hua tha? See what happened to sita, see what happened to Draupadi. You have always been a misogynist country, yeah, misogynist civilization. Any rape happens, they'll be like, bhartiya sanskruti. Now, when I was, um, few years ago where I, 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 didn't, I didn't start studying Itihas for writing a book. And that's why I say that I'm, a, I'm an accidental author. It's pretty much been Krishna Krupa. So even today, whatever I say, idam the mama, idam Krishna. It's totally his will that is making it happen. And it is his will that has brought me here as well. So I, I, I was very surprised that in a way, Rama and Mahabharata are called Dharma Granthas. Yeah, we call them Dharma Granthas. We call them Pancham Veda. However, when you read all the literature, largely fiction, written about Rama and Mahabharat, the view you typically get is the villains were actually maybe nice. People who we call villains they were actually not so bad. Ravan ne to hath bhi nahi lagaya, they say. You know, Keval kidnapped kya, only kidnapped, did not touch. Apparently as if that was a great thing, yeah. So, and Ravan today has become like a feminist, you know, heralder of feminism in India. I mean, how? Seriously. So I was very confused, Ki, yaar, yaar, what's going on here, right? One end they call this Dharma Grantha, but clearly the way I am understanding Ramayana Mahabharat, Dharma doesn't seem to have any meaning. Anything goes in the name of Dharma, because Dharma Raj takes away his wife, Ravan is, you know, glorified, Karna is glorified, because whatever happened, one way we talk of Karma Siddhanta, one way we talk of Dharma, then we say, Bichara Kard, he was dealt a raw deal. Why? Because you are a Jatiwadi Samaj. This is a Jatiwadi Samaj and hence all this happened. So I was like, what's going on? I really need to understand this. And if I want to get the answers of what really Dharma is and what Itihas is, I need to go back to the original. So that's how it started. And when I started reading, there were so many of these aha moments. Yeah. So I was just making notes and eventually the writing happened because I was writing on Facebook and the publisher saw it. So today, um, what I will talk is basically just leave you all with the depth that we have in Ramayana Mahabharat and sort of continue it from the talks that have happened in the past. Because I can, I can talk of Itihas from multiple angles. I can talk of it from a socio-political angle, how history is weaponized, how it is used to create a narrative right, and break the social fabric of the society, but that's not an area I want to go to right now. We started with talking about failures, yeah, oh, okay, before that, sorry, I forgot the, for, forgot explaining Itihas. So what is Itihas, and why do I believe that we should not call them mythology, we should call them Itihas, because one, the tradition calls it Itihas. Indic knowledge system is extremely well classified, extremely well. We have Shruti Smriti, and within the Smriti, we have the Vedangas, we have the Darshans, we have the Dharma Shastras, we have Itihas, we have Puran. There is no confusion about what is what. Purans are not called Itihas. Dharma Shastras are not called Itihas. Only two books are called Itihas, Mahabharata and Ramayana. 
and then the word itihas has also been explained so nothing has been left to our imagination it is all there itihasa most of you know what is itihasa i'm sure you know what itihasa is lot of you might know what does it mean it has happened itihasa so it was does it happen yeah and the definition is what tulsidas ji um, just told us dharma artha kam mokshanam उपदेशम समन्वितम पूर्व वृत्तम कथायुक्तम इतिहासम प्रचक्षते पूर्व वृत्तम पूर्व वृत्तम इट हैपेंड इन द पास्ट कथायुक्तम बट इट हैज एन एलिमेंट ऑफ कथा इट हैज बीन नरेटेड इन अ कथा फॉर्मेट व्हाई इट वाज एन ओरल ट्रेडिशन राइट द मैसेज हैड टू पास ऑन द मैसेज हैड टू बिकम इजी फॉर पीपल टू अंडरस्टैंड सो कथायुक्तम बट अनलाइक हिस्ट्री द पर्पस इज नॉट जस्ट डॉक्यूमेंटेशन the purpose of itihas is a lot more profound and that is why we call it dharma grantha it says dharma artha kam mokshanam upadesham samarvitam in the indic in sanatan dharma we talk of chaturvidha purushartha the goals of life to put it simply how do we make our life worthwhile how do we make it how do we live a fulfilling life right and there are moksh chhod denge to we talk about dharma artha kam we need resources we need desire we need praja utpatti and we need to do it in a way that is righteous now i'll come to the definition of dharma in our system at a later point but to give the upadesha of living a worthwhile life it is through itihas but the question is there are enough and more books giving us gyan right dharma shastras are also keep talking about gyan vedas are also talking about gyan then why itihas why do we need these two at all now today um, uh, ram uh, ram madhav ji spoke about storytelling yeah like knowing our itihas to counter woke ideologies we heard stories of two amazing people today industrialists right who've done something who've created something and lot of you who are who studied mba management students you know that we have something called as case studies right case study ka kya prayojan hai why do we need case studies at all because they help us understand the theory better they help us live the theory itihas is nothing but the case study that helps us understand karma siddhant dharma siddhant how do we live that what happens when certain decisions are made what happens when certain decisions are not made why do people make some decisions and others don't why do some people succeed why do some people don't this is what itihas is essentially meant for now if we want to get the right lessons from itihas we will have to know itihas for what it is right otherwise it is like what it is right now na everything goes sab gray hai mahabharat lot of people and not to blame anybody mera understanding my understanding was exactly the same that there is no right or wrong there is no good or bad in sanatan dharma everything is gray is it that not at all not at all both ramayana and mahabharat are very very clear of what is dharma and what is adharma very very clear yeah so um but anyways now i don't want to go into that path i want to talk about stories and i want to talk about stories because vaikuntha dham se mujhe wo order mila hai to talk about stories <laughs> so if it comes from vaikuntha dham i cannot uh, i cannot refuse um using as i said itihas is a case study to help us live our lives yeah so we listen to these stories of our ancestors how they lived their lives gain lessons from them gain inspiration from them how they dealt with the difficulties the challenges the failures that we were discussing in the previous session right how did they deal with the failures and how did they find courage to do what they did now interestingly that we are, what we are going to talk about today has been happening forever yudhishthir was also given this lesson there was a time uh, when they were in their vanvas and all of you know jayadrath tried to um, kidnap draupadi and run away with her so um, already yudhishthir was feeling ha, already had the guilt that he had taken away his wife and she had gone through so much pain because of him so that guilt was always there and then once after the jayadrath episode happened um markandeya rishi was visiting and yudhishthir tells him that my wife she is so pious and see what is happening to her and look at me is there any other person as unfortunate as i am my own people threw me away 
my own uncle played games with me my own cousins without any fault of mine is there anybody as unfortunate as i am and markandeya rishi is like there is don't cry happens happens to all of us there is let me tell you the story of shri ram of ayodhya so in mahabharat there is an entire ram ram uh, ram upakhyana where rishi markandeya narrates the story of shri ram to yudhishthir to help him gain strength and not cry over his fortune or over his misfortune so to say and learn that how shri ram in spite of all the you know misfortunes that he went through how he led his life how he fought ravan got his um, wife back and how his own people in in this case his own father his own mother somebody he looked up to so much made him go through the 14 years of vanvas yeah and the pain that he had gone through so markandeya rishi says this happens so clearly in mahabharat which is an itihas itihas was used to give the life to give the lesson of dharma artha kama moksha now coming to rama and i think i'll start with that um, we all know ram ji ko vanvas hua tha 14 years of vanvas the way it happens is that his raja abhishek is about to happen literally कुछ घंटों में फ्यू आवर्स द राजा अभिषेक वॉज अबाउट टू हैपन लाइक मुंह तक निवाला आ गया इन हिंदी भी सही ही वॉज अबाउट टू गेट इट एंड एवरी थिंग चेंज इन अ सेकेंड एवरी थिंग चेंज लाइफ चेंज कमिंग फ्रॉम होम हिज ओन पेरेंट्स कैकई एंड दशरथ या वाई डी एक्सेप्ट इट ही वॉज अ क्षत्रिय ही वॉज अ एल्डेस्ट सन ही हैड द राइट ओवर द थ्रोन and more than that the decision of making him the raja was not just dashrath you know we think that aaj hi hum democracy ki baat karte hain when the raja abhishek decision was happening dashrath proposes but he gets everybody to say why they support or don't support that proposal and he says no no don't support because he's my son and i am telling you to you give me reasons why you think ram is good for becoming the king because they all agree they're like yeah 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 let's make ram the king and then in the whole uh, chapter you see why they say ram shri ram was uh, apt to become the king yeah so the decision also wasn't only dashrath it was the decision of the lanka the citizens sorry citizens of ayodhya yeah so he could have said that nahi nahi i am not going this is a very unfair um punishment that i've been given for no no fault of mine i will not go why did he go what have we been told kyu chale gaye maryada purushottam shri ram putra dharm this is what we've been told and yes that is right putra dharm yes but what i what i told you right now about he also if he had fought for his right that wouldn't have been wrong he was a kshatriya lakshman tells him exactly the same thing that we shouldn't go away our father even if he is our father he is a king and he is taking a wrong decision we know what krishna advises arjun on the battlefield of kurukshetra doesn't matter if they are your dada gurus whatever anyay hai to ladna hai right justice has to be established dharma has to be established exactly the same thing lakshman tells shri ram but shri ram still goes and yes one of the reason is putra dharma but that is not the only reason and this is one of my favorite part of valmiki ramayana uh, so when i say itihas i should also clarify what i mean by itihas valmiki ramayana rishi valmiki rachit ramayana and rishi vyas rachit mahabharat is what i call itihas after that a lot of retellings have happened ramcharit manas ya yeah, kambar ramayana lot of them written with a lot of bhav written with a lot of bhakti however if there is a conflict in events described between the two i would go with the aitihasik version yeah also in the aitihasik version shri ram especially in ramayan he is a lot more human people somebody we can absolutely relate to lot more expressive yeah I, it's extremely beautiful i would urge all of you to pick up valmiki ramayana some day and read it but anyway so shri ram explains why he agrees to go and that is one of my favorite parts of ramayan he says yes putra dharma hai we should do what our father wants us to do he is also the king we should do that also if i don't go right now he may not say anything lakshman to says badhyatam va badhyatam va if we need to put him in the prison or we need to kill him 
everything is fine for Nyai. Yeah, this is what Lakshman is saying. And Sri Ram is saying, no, no. If I don't go, he might not force me to. But I know that in his mind, he will always have the guilt that he was untrue to his, on his promise to Kekai. I cannot live with that. But there is another reason which is even more important. Sri Ram says, till date, I have not done a thing that would make Kekai or our father to be upset with me. Not once. I have never discriminated between Kaushalya Ma and Kekai Ma. Not once. But even more importantly, <coughs> Kekai Ma has never differentiated between me and Bharat. She has always loved me like her own son. So for her to have this thought to cause me harm, to cause me pain, there is no rationale for it. There is no justification for it. So clearly something is going on here which shows that this is an act of destiny. Krutanta eva drashtavyo, he says. Krutanta eva drashtavyo, because how has this situation developed? Asankalpitam, akasmatam, accidentally out of nowhere. I would have been the king in two hours. And here I am, wearing vulkal and going to the forest. Asankalpitam cannot be explained, could, cannot be thought of, that even Kaikaima can think like this. So clearly there is something else to this, which I am not understanding right now. And I will understand it only if I accept this moment. If I accept what destiny has given me, let it evolve and let it show me what my path is. Yeah? This is what he says. Now this perspective is so different, right? Many a times situations develop in life when in spite of our best test of efforts, the best of efforts, we fail. Or at least apparently we fail. We had done everything we could in our possibility, in our you know, capacity, but we still fail. What do we do? Kya karte log? Suicide karte te? Nahi. Do we cry over it? Of course it feels bad. Of course it hurts. It hurts Sri Ram as well. But this is a perspective that sometimes you let life happen. And if you see the journey of a lot of successful people, this makes sense now, right? Steve Jobs was thrown out of his own company, Apple. He started another one, Pixar, made it big, and Apple called him back, right? But he created something else which would not have happened if he was not thrown out of his own form. So what do we do? Sometimes we accept our destiny. That is the first most important lesson. But then the question is, and Lakshman asks this, Lakshman is like, this is very fatalistic. This is what cowards do. Destiny bit thok diya. What does it mean? Because then, when Sita ji was kidnapped, Sri Ram could have said, destiny, kya karo? I didn't make, I didn't do anything to get her kidnapped, right? What do, what to do? Chhod do. Would that be a right approach at that point? Why not? Something wrong is happening, plus he has to put effort to first find. He had not completed the effort that has to be put in to get Sita ji back. That was his kartavya. He had to do that. Right? So the two situations are very different. Now, how do we understand this then? The answer comes from the one and only quintessential Krishna from Gita. You've all heard the shlok. Somebody please say it for me. Karmanne vadhikaraste. Karmanne vadhikaraste ma faleshu kadachana. Aapka adhikar karma par hai, karma fal par nahi hai. It doesn't say don't expect karma fal. It says karma par adhikar hai, karma fal par nahi hai. Kyu nahi hai? Lot of people say, so when we used to have some of these Gita discussions, lot of youngsters would be like, well, what is the motivation for me to work if I can't decide the outcome? But Krishna also explains this. He explains this in the 18th chapter. He talks about how success, siddhi, how does it happen? And he says, panchaitani mahabaho, karanani, there are five reasons which cause the siddhi, which cause the success or failure of any task. Which are these five? He says, adhishthana, adhishthana tatha karta, karana cha prutak vidham, adhishthana tatha karta, karana cha prutak vidham, prutak vidhani, prutak vidha cheshtaha, and panchamaiti daivam, he says. 
adhishthan adhishthan is so for example let's let's take an infrastructure project yeah say we have to create or make a bridge we are constructing a bridge you need to have the right kind of engineers people who are skilled right kind of training to be able to build that bridge so that is the karta you need to have the right kind of resources to make the bridge happen cement hai steel hai whatever the iron rods the mati all of that you need the right resources right instruments to make the bridge third you need to follow a process right there has to be a process that has to be followed kuch bhi kaise bhi kar denge that won't work fourth adhishthan you have to take care of where you are building the bridge is the area right if it is earthquake prone not earthquake prone that will define how else you make your project plan all of that right when do you start you will not start construction during the rainy season so the whole platform the whole surrounding environment that is sort of adhist adhishthan we can make sense of that like that but in project management there is one more factor these are all parts of project management right project management mein ye sab dekhte hain resources who is going to do it uh, the process the surrounding environment there's one more factor which we consider in project management what is that when you do your calculations and stuff i loudly risk factor krishna says panchetani mahabaho so these are the four panchamiti daivam the fifth is that risk factor which is not in your control mathematics we call it probability you cannot control it everything might be right or achanak se kuch ho gaya what do you do in that case so krishna is talking exactly the same thing that shri ram is talking about that there is an element of daivat an element of destiny that will always play a part irrespective of your efforts however however panchamiti daivam only the fifth is daivam the first four if they are not in place you will still fail we will still fail so only when the all those four are in order when we have ensured we build our capacity right when we ensure we have the right kind of effort put in right kind of resources used all of that after that also if something is not going the way we expected it to maybe there is something else to it except it move on yeah except it move on so this is one of the lessons of ramayan mahabharat both right how do you think about success or failures the key person here the one of the key factor here is karta right the karta needs to have the right kind of capabilities who is the right karta so of course we have lots of heroes in mahabharat ramayan but one very um, somebody i really look up to is hanuman ji for hanuman ji we usually think of him he is called buddhimatam varishtham but typically the stories told of him are you know larger than life superhero stories yeah sure he is that they sp we speak about his bhakti but in ramayan you see so many facets of hanuman ji which are just absolutely mind blowing which explain why he is buddhimatam varishtham yeah in fact for him uh, shri ram ji says that guna gunai hi sanyuktam ye yasya yasya karya sadhaka with all these gun that hanuman ji has like that like any person who has that kind of karya sadhaka has people working for them there is no chance that their work will not get done all work will happen because of the guna which hanuman ji has so which are these gunas four things are spoken of yeah four things valmiki ji says hanuman ji had drishti vision dhriti sankalp resolve mati intelligence and daksha ability to implement what he has undertaken hawa mein baat kiya aisa nahi you might have a vision but unless and until you put it on the ground make it happen still no success will come so for hanuman ji valmiki ji says four things drishti dhriti mati and daksha now what is an what is a good example of it lanka dahan we all know that story but you know why he does lanka dahan anybody knows why kyu unhone lanka dahan kiya because what was his mandate his mandate was jao ja ke sita ji ko dhoond ke aao go find sita ji that was it right nobody told him go and burn lanka nobody said that nobody said ulaj jao rakshasu se because they don't even know who where really he is going to be 
Now see how this person is thinking, how Hanumanji is thinking in that uh, episode, yeah? So he goes to Ashok Vatika. First, so he's trying, looking everywhere, doesn't find. Even, so in Valmiki Ramayana, even at that time, when he's not finding Sita Ji, how his thoughts, you know, how, how his brain is working is very fascinating, but I'll, I won't get, get, get into that right now. When he meets Sita Ji, he, he's found her. He sees that she's an Ashok Vatika. He's gotten a good sense of Lanka. Yeah, he's understood that, ha, there is this person, Ravan, who's very powerful, who has a very powerful army. And he's not going to let Sita ji go as he. So now, his vision is that he understands, right, the larger picture. He knows war to hone wala hai. War is definitely going to happen. Now, if the war happens, you need to know your the strengths and weaknesses of your opponent, right? Even in our businesses, we do SWOT analysis of the market, of the competitors. So in the war also, Hanuman ji needs to tell Sri Ram that, Achha, war karna hai. this is the strength, this is the weakness, this is how we can strategize and capture it. How will he know unless and until he investigates? Now, how will he investigate? Sometimes, some things can happen. You can know the strength of the army only when you have a jhad up with them. So he's thinking, he's like, okay, I found Sita ji. I did my task. But if I go back without finding any other information, I'm not a good duta. I need to get sense of all this is happening so that we are prepared when the war happens. Hence, he's like, for that, I will need to ensure that I provoke the Lanka army. Okay. Now he also wants to meet Ravan because he wants to get a sense of what this man is. Right? Who is this man? And if possible, also let him know that Sita ji has been found. Yeah, but that would only happen after the, he knows the strength. Hence, he starts, you know, doing, uh, he starts destroying Ashok Vatika. So, Ravan sends his troops to, you know, capture him. Through that, he gets a sense of, Acha, army mein kitna strong hai? What is the fortification like? How strong are the people? What kind of weapons they have? All of that. And he wants to ensure, now he's gotten a sense of that. As I said, he wants to meet Ravan. So, he gets himself captured. Yeah, he gets himself captured through Indrajit so that he will be taken to Ravan. Now, when he meets Ravan, he sees him and what his uh, reaction is, I'll come to it a bit later. But he sees Ravan and uh, they have this discussion and he says, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm the duta of uh, Sri Ram and uh, Sugriva. I've come here to tell you that please let Sita go. Other, otherwise, he basically gives them a warning that we'll attack. But in that also, see what he does. Hanuman, and Hanumanji reminds Ravan of Wali because Wali had defeated Ravan once. Wali was extremely powerful. Wali had defeated Ravan once. So Hanumanji tells him, you know Wali, right? And then they had become, they had patched up and Wali and Ravan had become friends. So he says, you know Wali, right? Your friend Wali, you know him very well. You know how he had defeated you, how much strength he had. He had defeated you. Do you know Sri Ram killed this guy with just one arrow? That is your opponent that you are going to face. Now, this is first of all trying to threaten him. Possibly that, by that he would understand and let Sita ji go. But of course, Ravan was not going to let Sita ji go. But man mein doubt to aagya na. Ab tak he was so secured in his mind, no doubt. He thought he is going to be invincible. Nothing is ever going to happen. Now, here somebody crossed all the way, 100 Yojanas, came to Lanka showed him the strength, reminded him of his own failure. So now there is a little bit of tension and that is when Ravan really starts getting worried and he thinks, haan, kuch to hai. And by this, also Hanumanji has gauged Ravan, right? So when he goes back to Sri Ram, he actually gives a detailed description of what he saw in Lanka. What will they have to do if they have to win this war of, uh, when eventually the war happens? Drishti, Dhriti, Mati, and Daksha. All this is also needed to succeed in anything that we do. That is what we learn from Hanumanji. But you know, this is not enough by and large because a lot of people have Buddhi Bal, Bahubal. Of course, Bahubal also is needed, right, to be able to do all of this. Because if you see Ramayana itself or if we see Mahabharat, it is not as if who we call as, you know, the bad side 
uh, the Kauravas or Ravad, it is not as if they did not have buddhi. It is also not as if they did not have power. Then what was it that differentiated, say, Arjun and Karn, or say, Ram and Ravan? Ram and Ravan we'll come to later. Or maybe, you know, we can skip that, Arjun and Karn, because I also want to make another point with respect to Karn. How many of you believe that Karn was discriminated against and his, his defeat was also unfair? Yeah, just one. Wow. So everybody, okay, so most of you believe that Karn ke saath jo hua was saying, great, I mean, I'm happy. Usually that is not the case. People have a soft corner. I mean, I have, I'll tell you, I've, I've gotten so many gullies. Even today I keep getting, ki Karn ko bura bol diya. Like, Karn ko bura bol diya. Anyways, he's discriminated against. Why is he discriminated against? Why is he discriminated, discriminated against? What are sutas? Are charioteurs bad? Krishna was a charioteur. If charioteurs were that bad, would Arjun have the courage to tell Krishna become my charioteur? Achha, chalo, they were friends. Wo jane do. Karna gets Shalya to become his charioteur. So if charioteur, Suta was a gali, would Shalya agree to be his Suta? I'll give you an example of one more Suta. Then you tell me. Yeah? Have you heard of Kichak? Who is Kichak? You know it, I know. Matsya Naresh, Virat, Matsya ke jo raja hai, Virat, unka senapati. He's also the brother of his wife, Sudeshna. Yeah? And he's so powerful, Kichak is so powerful, that even though he violates Draupadi, even the king cannot utter a word. He's that powerful because his defenses are dependent on Kichak. You know who was Kichak? Kichak is a Sutputra. He is called a Suta, which makes Sudeshna Suta. Who was the daughter of Sudeshna? Who was she married to? So these people who hate Sutas, who consider them so bad, go and marry the daughter of a mother, the daughter of a Sutputri. Does it make sense at all? Then. So Kichak can be a warrior being a Suta, yeah. Shalya agrees to be a charioteer, which is apparently, you know, not considered so bad. Then what is this Suta thing all about? Okay, do you know who the, the story of Mahabharata that we have, who narrated that, the version? We know Vyasji was the one to compose it. Yeah, Vyasji composed it. He wrote the story the history of his own sons, so to say, right? He's the biological father of both Dhritarashtra and Pandu. And Kaurav's Pandavas are basically his grandsons, bloodline. It is Vyasji's bloodline, in a way, right? So actually, that's bring, that brings me to another point. Usually we say history is written by victors. Hence, if Kaurav's had won, then we are told that Kaurav's would have been the heroes. But here, Rishi Veda Vyasa, ek to he's a Rishi, Second, what is his motivation to, you know, suck up to the Pandavas, if at all? Because he has exactly the same relation that he has with Kauravas that he has with Pandavas, right? So in this case, if people tell us history written by victors doesn't stand for Mahabharat, not at all. There couldn't have been a more unbiased source, yeah? Anyway, so Vyasji composed the story of his uh, children. It was narrated, the first time a public rendition of Mahabharat happens, it's in the Sarpa Satra, it's in the Yagna of Janmajay. Who is Janmajay? Janmajay is Parikshit's son. Parikshit is Abhimanyu's son, yeah? So in Janmajay's Yagna, it's the first time a public rendition of Mahabharat happens. Now in this gathering, there is a Rishi, a Kathavachak. His name is Ugrashrava Sauti son of a Suta, of a person of a Suta Jati, Sauti, Ugrashava Sauti. He listens to this Mahabharat and he's traveling. He goes to Naimisharanya. In the forest, there is a Gurukul of Rishi Shaunak. So the students of Rishi Shaunak, they ask him, Ki, Ugrashava Sauti ji, where are, you, where are you coming from? And he says, oh, I was in this yagna of Janmajay. And there, Mahabharat, the story of Kauravs and Pandas was narrated. So the students want to know. And the Mahabharat that we have, it starts with Sauti Uvacha. Sauti said, 
that is the rendition we have so if sutras were so bad seriously correct now i'll tell you who sutras are okay sutra is a mixed jati now this will also tell you the whole you know uh, thing the very simplistic framework told us told to us ki char jati keval utna hi tha no intermingling yeah sutra is a mixed jati mixed jati of kshatriya father and brahman mother v1 v2 it's pratiloma but still kshatriya father brahman mother and all the progeny that comes out of that relationship are then basically sutras now sutra you see they had dual guna karma the brahman side also the kshatriya side also hence lot of them used to be kathavachaks like ugrashava sauti his his father was loma harshan he was also a kathavachak a rishi yeah they had that kathavachak tradition they were warriors also the kekaya uh, the the kekaya kingdom is basically has largely been a sutra uh, kingdom yeah so they were warriors also that's where kichak comes from from kekai so deshna is a kekai is the daughter of kekai yeah so there were there were warriors as well who were who were from the sutra jati now i'll tell you another one and over time then where whatever the professions were were they were either taken in into the brahmin side or the kshatriya side a very very interesting case is of the yadavas yadu is the first is the founder so to say of the yadav lineage his father mother anybody knows yayati and devyani yayati is a kshatriya devyani is shukracharya's daughter she is a brahmin yadavas in that sense actually also become sutra eventually because he is a raja and all they become kshatriyas and this has happened so this, this this is not one of the case no no this has regularly happened and that is why when you even see the description of jatis and stuff yeah jatis and stuff there are lot of mixed jatis which you encounter in both mahabharat and ramayan even nishads are mixed jatis yeah so a lot of mingling also happened and that is why when uh, yudhishthir is asked that who is a brahmin and he says it's only through vyavahar and you know who has all these qualities satya kshama dama all of that he is a brahmin so at that time nahush who's asking him this question tells him so then does the birth not matter at all and yudhishthir says birth used to matter but now so much varna sankar has happened basically so much intermingling has happened that the one on one of jati and varna doesn't stay anymore he's talking about his times yeah he's talking about his times and hence in the society as well there is a lot of this intermingling that has happened prajati of all types have been there yeah now having known this we can still say karna ke sath discrimination hua because we are told na dronacharya refused to teach him if really sutras weren't that bad then dronacharya should have taught him what was the big deal do you know what's the truth here in mahabharat karna is dronacharya's student he is not refused he is dronacharya's student but karna chooses to go to parshuram why because Arjun is a very very focused student. He doesn't care about anything else. I'll come to Arjun in a bit. He's very very focused. He is only concerned about ensuring he becomes an expert. So he will keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. Somewhere, Karna used to be jealous of uh, Arjun even when they were studying at Dronacharya's. Now he thought, if I need to defeat Arjun, I need to get better shastras. He used to think I can't defeat Arjun not because of his own. maybe relatively less competence but because he didn't have the right astra so he goes to uh, dronacharya ji and tells him that i want to learn the brahmastra dronacharya says no you don't have the adhikar to learn brahmastra dronacharya is not even taught arjun the brahmastra he teaches brahmastra to his son that also half and what does he do ashwatthama we know what he does with the half brahmastra that he knows yeah so he says i won't teach you the brahmastra karn is like okay then i will find another guru dronacharya is like be my guest go that's when he goes to parshuram so this whole discrimination thing itself does not exist as in not in the way it has been told to us at least yeah and why this is important because then we will be able to understand why karna as in why karna gets the death he does and why arjun is what arjun is yeah 
Now, uh, I think it's already half an hour, so I'll stop here. But I would say, please explore the texts for what they are. Um, and you will really be amazed at how profound, profound these texts are. I can go on and on, but I'll stop here because I'm sure you might want me to cover different aspects. So we have, what, 10 minutes? Sure. So we could do a question and a question answer on that. You did complete the part where Thunder died. Was it right or wrong? Ha, okay, so fine, okay. I, I'll take that. I was, I thought, yes, we can, uh, you can explore it, but anyways. So when Karna ka jo mrityu time hai na, when the one on one with uh, Arjun happens, and when um, his wheel, Karna's wheel goes into the ground, he says, uh, we think we take care of dharma, but dharma never takes care of us. See what is happening to me. And Krishna tells him, wow, very nice. Now you are thinking of dharma. Where was all your dharma all these years? When you were, so actually for this answer, I need to go into the depth of the entire Mahabharat, how Karna at every point is provoking Duryodhan for a war. It's almost as if he wants the war more than Duryodhan. Yeah, he never lets any Sandhi, never lets any negotiation happen. Every time, every time the elders try to put some sense into Duryodhan, this our man will jump in. Karna will jump in. He's like, no, 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 you don't listen to them. I am there, no, main hu na, main hu na. You don't worry, I will kill Arjun. And every time when he has an encounter, the Matsya war that happens, they are all there and Arjun defeats all of them. Gandharva war, he runs away. Yeah. So Karna character will take a lot more detail. But the thing is, Krishna tells him why killing him is actually not adharma. Also, this whole episode where we are taught that, wo haat laga ke baitha hai, karn, you know, holding the wheel. He doesn't need to do that. This happens regularly. So many times Arjun is fought from the ground with the whole Sena. And even at that time, they're like, why are you, you know, why can't you fight? He fights, he decides not to fight because he's not able to recollect the Brahmastra which Parshuram had given him. So now he's only trying to buy time. Why should Krishna and Arjun give him time? For what? They were not breaking any rules. He was stopping, he was only trying to buy time because he was now unsure of his own yay. So even when he's down there, it is not as if he's not fighting, he has Yuddha. The thing is, when we see all this picturization and the masala added just to create this, you know, we love masala, right? There is so much emotion in that. Kisi ke saath atyachar ho hai, discrimination ho hai, it brings tears to eyes, poor guy. Because in some way, we love victimhood. We see that even now, right? Are bichara school master ka beta. School master ka beta, what did he do? The school master ka beta went and killed like thousands of people there. Yeah? What? School master ka beta. But still it works on us. That is how they create it. That is how they make us so vulnerable to this kind of emotional narratives, which don't even exist. So Karna is a very interesting character. I can go on and on about it. However, the success of Arjun, so Dhriti, Drishti, Mati, Daksha, this we saw, which Pandavas also had, Arjun also had. He had one more quality, which differentiates him from everyone else, largely uh, Karna. So Karna ko, Jabibi, if anybody would tell him that what you're doing is wrong. In fact, during the war, he's trying to shoot, at, shoot an arrow at uh, Arjun. And Shalya tells him, you have not taken the right mark. Your, your arrow will miss Arjun. He's like, how dare you tell me? Ab to main SH karunga. Misses it. Karn cannot take feedback. Whereas Arjun, even in Gita, right? He says, Shishyaste ham, shadi maam tvam prapanna. I surrender to you. You are my mentor. I surrender to you. He knows the limitation of his own knowledge, his own wisdom, and he's willing to learn and to surrender. That is another quality. That is another very important aspect of humility to say it's possible, I don't know. And hence, I will seek from others. I will learn from others. That's another very, very important quality that Arjun has. And yeah, I'm done with my talk.